Welcome to 24 Hour Sports. You are now here with Daryl Green. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Today we're going into the NFC Game of the Week. This is the Game of the Week because these two teams are surprises. A lot of people did not expect these two teams to be performing the way they are so far during the year right now. And we got the New York Giants versus the Seattle Seahawks. This is the ground game. This may be an old school ground and pound dogfight football game. That is what we're getting ready for. The reason I say that, both of these teams, when we look at their offenses, in a way, we're looking in the mirror. They're so similar yet so different. They run the ball, both offenses. These are two top 10 rushing offenses. The difference is Geno Smith has been playing out of his mind. He's leading the NFL in completion percentage. He's playing very efficient from the pocket, and that's the difference. The Giants passing game, Daniel Jones, he's done enough. But they haven't been mind-blowing. They haven't been mind-blowing like we've seen Geno Smith doing some great things from the pocket. And you know how we do it on this channel. We're going to break it down. We're going to be objective. Coming into this game, the Seahawks are three-point betting favorites. I don't know how the Seahawks are favorites, but I'm going to be objective. I'm going to break down the film. I'm going to let everybody see it. And then at the end of the video, we're going to give it a review. But let's roll the team. Okay, so going into this game, I believe this is really a battle of the running backs. This is the number two rushing offense with the Giants versus the number 10 rushing offense with the Seahawks. But it's deeper than that. These are two of the best running backs in the game. Kenneth Walker is only a rookie, but once you see this film, you won't be able to tell the difference. So right here, this is the first play. We're going to get the guard and the tackle both pulling. We're getting blockers out in front, and we're letting Kenneth Walker make magic happen. We're going to pass you the ball, but you got to go get the ball. Bucket. So that's what we're seeing right here. We got the pulling guards. Now we see Kenneth Walker right here. Khalil Mack. This is not something you expect from an experienced edge rusher, but he gives up the outside. You always have to leave that outside shoulder open. He got hooked up by the guard, and now he can't be able to make a play on this play. But Kenneth Walker does a great job. He's riding behind his blockers. Then boom, as soon as he sees there's nothing there, he cuts outside, now he's going. And we're going to see the giant struggle with this kind of action. Right here, we're going to get the tackle and the tight end pulling. It's not a guard tackle pull, it's the tackle and the tight end pulling. But it's the same concept nonetheless. We're going to see a puller, we're going to see the outside edge defender give up that outside shoulder, get hooked, and Travis Etienne... You think Travis Etienne ran well? Kenneth Walker will do the same, if not more, if you give him these same opportunities. So right here, like I said, we got a motion. We got the tackle and the tight end pulling and the outside edge defender. Like I said, once again, you have to keep that outside shoulder out. You have to keep it free. He gets hooked here. And Travis Etienne, once he gets an open corner, he has the speed and the burst to make defenses pay. That's exactly what he does here. You can't give this up. Kenneth Walker would do the same thing to you. And Jalen Smith, you're the guy. You're the guy this week. You're the most important guy on the team. You and Tay Crowder. If y'all going to have any chance of winning this game, you got to trust your eyes. And the defensive coordinator has to put you in good positions. Right here, we're going to see the Seahawks. They run a simple zone concept. But what they find themselves doing, the linebacker Kenneth Murray, he's two-gapped. He has to pick between the A-gap or the B-gap. And that's a tough, tough position to be in. You're playing the B gap in front of you. And you also have to play the opposite A gap because they're both open. We're going to see as the play runs here. Opposite A gap and the B gap's open. I'm the linebacker. What do I do? I need a linebacker beside me to play that cutback alley, but he's not there. He's not there. He gets caught up on a block. Now I'm stuck half in the two gap. That slows down my read. That slows down my step. I can't make the play. And Kenneth Walker, what does he do? Score. And the oldest cliche in the book, everybody already knows, what is a quarterback's best friend? A run game. Why? Because you can do play action, because you can do RPO. This is what Philly has been so good at and why their offense is being special right now. But we're also seeing the Giants doing some of this same thing. Look at the safety. Look at his alignment. He's too deep. This is an automatic read for Daniel Jones. He never has the thought of handing this off because that's his read. It's wide open. Nobody's going to get there in time unless the outside linebacker drops off, then you would hand it off. But since he comes off the edge, that's your read. Look how much space you have. Look how much grass you have. Look how wide open that is first 
down. And another thing when playing against a team who likes to do RPO, who likes to be play action, you have to be disciplined as a linebacker. Right here, we're going to see 56 stay disciplined from the linebacker position. He has the motion. He steps over, but he's not getting out of his responsibility. He's not. He's reading that. Soon as he sees that guard pulling, he's coming up. He's filling that gap, and he makes a great tackle. That's how you stay disciplined. You don't fall for the eye candy, and that's going to be very important for both the Giants and and Seahawks linebackers this week. And to be honest with you, I'm not putting too much stock into the rush defense that the Seahawks had against the Chargers because that is the 26th rushing offense. So we know what that is. Justin Herbert, he throws a lot of passes. But I think a lot of people don't actually realize the Seahawks are the 10th ranked team in sacks. This is a top 10 sacks team. So they're going to get after Daniel Jones. Yeah, that team has been converting third down a lot lately, but it's going to be really put to the test this week. So right here, we see him. We see him on defense against Justin Herbert. We see the edge rusher, Daryl Taylor. Look at him come out the edge. And what does he do? He beats this guy. He gets a turnover, and the Giants have been good with keeping the football, protecting the football. But like I said, both teams are going to be put to the test. Geno Smith, I seen him put the ball in some questionable spots against the Chargers. But Daniel Jones, you have to keep doing what you're doing. Saquon Barkley, keep doing what you're doing. Don't turn it over. At the same time, though, I know the Giants aren't worried because how do you block a good pass rushing team? You don't. So right here, we're going to see them run a screenplay. And this is something they're going to implement into their game plan against the Seahawks because those guys, they're trying to rush the passer. And all you got to do is hit them with a screen. It's going to be there. It's going to be open. Right here, the Jaguars actually do a good job of playing this screen. However, it's only because their linebackers bluffed. If they didn't bluff and they actually came, this is nothing but green grass in front of Saquon. So let's not put too much into it. But still, it's a good concept of running a screenplay. You're going to see screenplays against the Seattle Seahawks. One thing you won't see from the Seahawks, though, you're not going to see Geno Smith running like Daniel Jones can run. I can guarantee you that. 10 times out of the week. So, right here, this is a design run read option with Daniel Jones. We're going to see a lot of that. We're going to see a lot of him just scrambling out of the pocket when things aren't there to throw. And that, I believe, will be the difference in the game. I believe that's the difference in the game because realistically speaking, these aren't good rush defenses. And if it comes down to third down, it's really going to come down to coaching, play calling, quarterback play. I think Daniel Jones has what it takes. I believe he has the right mental, the right mental aspect, the fire in the drive. Geno Smith, you're playing exceptional, but I just don't know. I believe those stats are a little inflated. If I had to judge Geno's best game, it would be the game against the Broncos because I know what that defense is. He didn't play particularly well against the 49ers, and I believe a little of those stats are inflated, especially after the Lions game. That's, all, that's not a good defense, so you have an inflation game. Your stats were inflated after that game. Going back to the Giants, I believe Daniel Jones has looked good from the pocket. They have the 30th passing offense, but I believe that's just because they can run the ball. They know they can run the ball. They don't have a true number one wide receiver right now. So play to your strength. And that's exactly what they do. That's why I believe they will win this game. Again, Geno Smith has looked well, but this is a good pass defense for the Giants. They're around in the middle of the pack, but I like that secondary. I like those guys. I believe they're scrappy. It's ultimately going to come down to who can stop the run. But he is going to be met hard and met fast by number 31 of that defense, Daryl Green. A name that I have said again and again tonight. Daryl Green making a huge tackle. 